Okay, moving on, and yes, I'm gonna get a wrestle with this uh, this light shining across the paper. Um, which, truth be told, will often, to me, look like kind of a cool idea and sort of make me think about, hmm, if I wanted it actually to look like that, I could bring in a scrubby brush and um, scrub away some color there and some color there. Um, anyways, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to get my... Um, This is a, a smaller number two. This is Simmons White Sable. That small number four silver brush would probably work too. But um, I'm gonna go back and really start kind of refining some things. And I'm gonna just work on this first shape of the peacock blue and what I'm going to do is just add some some watery paint probably to the whole shape I really don't want to make it darker but I do want to just try to sort of, sort of gently scrub away and clean up this edge it is a it's a staining color so it's it's not going to let me do a whole lot so really that was almost like just painting the shape with water But I'm going to um, the reason I'm using this brush is that it is a, a, a little stiffer than the, uh, the silver brush, so it will help sort of agitate these edges a little bit more. Um, if, if there is a, a, a paint there that will lift easily, that can be. That can be problematic. Um, now I'm going to just dip in. I got a little bit stronger color. I know the shape is is still all pretty wet. That was a little too watery that I dabbed in. That was more like it. So if you have a synthetic for, you might try it for this. Like I say, the softer silver brush will work too. So I'm just kind of trying to gradate it a little. And the, on the left edge and the lower edge, just to cr create a little bit more something interesting happening. Let's see, I think I'll do the same thing for, yeah, for the next one down. That's a mix. So I'll want some pretty watery because I, I really don't want it darker. Maybe just a tad darker, but I know you can't see me mixing, but let's see. Okay, that's not. The downside of this brush is that um, because it doesn't hold as much water, You can get um, sort of lulled into it. 
pressing down too much and make just getting it so it looks overworked. So I'm doing something kind of a, a little bit interesting and different here. I was painting over this shape and had some color over here. And then I realized that I think it was going to be dark enough. So I just, as I started moving over to the, to the right of this shape, I just started rinsing out any of the color that was left and then just sort of brought in some water. And indeed I can do that more if I want to just to sort of get the color once again over that way. So I'm just dropping in some clear water. It's, it's pretty subtle, I know. Um, and coaxing the, the paint over, over there. And that's, you know, that's probably agitating the paint a little bit, but as long as I don't um, really lean into it too much, it'll be fine. Let me see, the French Ultra. Nope, sorry, not French. <laughs> it's just plain old Ultra, <laughs> Ultramarine. Pretty much the same paint, I had to say it. Let's see here. Yeah, I, I want this one to start getting a little bit darker as I as we go down. I keep using this. Brush, but I do want to make sure I keep reloading it. So even if I'm, there's several ways to sort of make a graded wash and usually depends on, or making sure you know which, what value you want to go from what to what. So at this point I could sort of think to myself, oh, maybe I'll some, add some water here and, and, and um, move the darker paint over here like I did on this one. But I actually want this overall shape to be darker than the one above it. So I'm gonna um, dab in some paint over here. Because I didn't want it lighter right here. That's which, what water would have done. Trying to be careful that this paint that I'm adding is pretty much the same amount of water ratio of paint to water that's sort of already on the paper there. Okay. Next one, I think I'm going to get a different brush for this one. The one that I was using over on these, at least I think. Um, so dioxazine and here, I'm going to um, see if I can shift a little so maybe have some fun watching that. Let's see. What do I have here? I think this, this is all, it might have been a couple things, but that's okay. I want dioxazine and 
and purple, but not this much. Ooh, I'm going a little crazy. This looks so nice on the, pa <laughs> on the palette, I will say. But um, let me see. So I just rinsed a bunch of that out. And I want to come back. And when you see me um, do this with the brush, like I know it sort of goes off camera, but I go like, I go, uh. And th there's, I'm just trying to get drops of water that are sitting on the, on the actual brush to come off. I wonder what that is. Peanut butter, maybe. So I want this one a little bit darker than the one right above it. And I'll get some, some paint that's a little bit more concentrated. And dab it in over on the left side here. Coax it around. Do like um, depending on how the values are going. It's it's nice to um, to really exaggerate here. Just a second. Let me clean this up. Either that or mess it up. To really exaggerate, well, exaggerate is, is sort of the, not the right word. Subtly exaggerate. Can you say that? I just did. But I'm making this shape just a little bit darker in this lower left corner than, than even anywhere else. I, I overshot, so I'll have to clean, clean that up, covering my white stripe later. But um, just that little subtle amount of just a little bit darker, just a little bit more darker as I keep going to the edge of the shape, I think, hmm. What about just a little bit more darker? And in fact, I'm going to um, get out my smaller brush and just grab a little bit more. Not sure how the lighting is right now, but either way, that's what I'm going to do with that. Okay, I'm going to call that done, that shape. Now I will come back and make this a little bit darker. And in fact, this is going to need to be darker too. You know, this is still wet though, actually. Uh, slightly. That's looking nice. You see all the, how dark this is right here? Um, I think I'm just going to... Um, use the indigo and a little bit of dioxazine purple. I might, yeah, I wonder what would happen if I just brought in a touch of ultramarine. I could certainly make, you know, I could start mixing a lot of things and then bring in a little Quinn Rose if I really wanted to start getting more purpley. 
but um, so let's see. It's, yeah, it's really not so purpley, huh? And it's not so grayed out either. Let's check this out. Let's see what happens. I like that it's taking it more back to more back to blue than I want. Certainly grayed out and a little bit different. Um, I'll just bring in a little bit more violet and then sort of rethink that. So that wasn't quite violet enough, so I just mixed up a little bit of violet in my brush and then introduce it back to this, this shape that already has some other paint in it. Let's see, I'm gonna um I'm gonna rinse the color out in my brush because there was several colors in there. It was really not changing to the violet as much as I wanted. I got a little bit more violet, but it was actually a little bit too wet. Um Let's see. Good opportunity to just sort of re-wet the whole shape, but subtly, because the whole it's pretty small and I hadn't got enough purple in that mix. And then I was I was trying to make it darker over on the left edge. I brought in some paint that was a little bit too watery. So it wasn't it wasn't gonna make this darker, but it was gonna basically make inconsistent distribution. And um not dry like I would want it to. Oh shoot, that's why this is so dark. <laughs> Perhaps this one won't make it. Ah! Hey, thanks! Eh! Ah, you can, um. You can do something if that's too frustrating for you. Right. Or you can just be grateful for these really cool videos. <laughs> so that's creating. It's interesting. I, this When this one dries, it will be good to really get a sense of if this is... This seems lighter to me than this one right now. And... Um, it could be just because the difference, the different effect when things are wet versus dry. But either way, I'll probably end up making that one darker. Let me come back up here. I think that top row is okay. If anything, the... um. The middle row, I'm sorry, the second row, that might be a touch dark and that might be a touch light.
let's let's try this. Okay. Um, I'm basically just going to wet this these two shapes together. I'm going to do it real gently and, and soft, especially where there's more paint, because if I lean into it, I can sort of scrub out color in one place and not in another. But I, I am actually going to be tr trying to scrub a little. I think maybe coax is, again, the, the better choice of words. Anytime I'm trying to pick up paint or wake up paint that's already on the paper, it can be it can be tough to do that without streaking. But once again, the um, yeah, so I'm just kind of subtly shifting it around. It's just sort of like scumbling almost paintbrush technique. But um, so yeah, that's sort of, that I think solving solving both issues. This this one I'll come back and, and refine that edge. And who knows, it may dry not quite as dark as I want it overall, but that is one way to um adjust a couple things at once. Thinking of using that that phrase that involves birds and stones, but I always hate that one. I'm gonna try to bring in a little bit darker color along this edge. And this bottom edge, I don't have quite that clean as I want. I'm kind of forgetting which blue is which blue over here, but um, because it's a mix, it's not so critical. I don't know that that was true, but I'm going to um, keep painting. I think what I did was actually kind of cool. I don't know that I did it on purpose. Um, I dropped in a little bit of uh, peacock blue, and in fact, I'm so excited about that idea. <laughs> I'm going to do it some more. So along this top edge, which is the one that is closest to the peacock, I'm going to drop in a little bit of peacock blue. It sort of looks like it's just getting darker, but down here I dropped in a little bit of ultramarine. And, and I'll try a little bit more down here. And you, you can definitely tell it's, it's subtly different. I'm going to let that one dry now. This one, my regular French Ultra, I, I'm sorry, I keep, I keep saying that, Ultramarine, French, French Ultra, something about that phrase is appealing. But let's see, I want it a little bit darker, and I want it um, overall a little darker, and then 
a little graded darker towards the left edge. Okay, this is really not the best brush for this one, but I'm now I'm too far in it. Just keep going back. Subtle touch. I remember when I started feeling like the sensation of the brush going across the paper was different than I either remembered it from when I was a kid or what I expected. There always seemed to be a roughness that was unappealing, a little bit unappealing to me. And the longer I've painted, the more I realize that that was just because I was pressing too hard and not having enough watery color for what I was, for whatever shape I was trying to do. And that really what I'm doing is touching touching some watery color in one area and then advancing that watery color to an, another area without with per, as little pressure as possible for this sort of technique. A little bit more concentrated. It's kind of drying over here, but I'm going to keep trying here. Hmm. I'm really not sure which is what there's indigo in that mix. I'm not going to put that there, but maybe a touch more ultra. I want to make sure I'm it's I'm getting close to adding too much water. This is a subtle a subtle thing. Sometimes if I'm not sure, I'll just do one drop like that, and you'll know pretty quickly if, if it's the right, if some color comes out and stays there, I mean, and blends away, but doesn't create a back run, then that's the right concentration. You do one blob like that and it really just brings in water and pushes the, the color away, then you can adjust that. So once again, I'm just kind of, the shape is really drying this way. It's pretty dry over here. I don't want to... Um, That's fine. Okay, let's see. Next one down. Yeah, I want to do something to this one too. I wonder how long this video is getting. Blue and violet. This was, yeah, this was mostly my blue and violet, I'm pretty sure. So I made way too much of it and way too strong of it, but had fun doing it. <laughs> there may be a little indigo in there, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, now I have my bigger, a little bit bigger brush for this one.
you know, this shape might be a candidate for um, introducing some clean water to create the gradation because the overall value is just getting a little bit close to the to the next one over. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to I think this brush is going to be okay. I just rinsed the color out and I'm going to dab in some clean water there. It's hard to sort of see what happens. But then I am going to tilt. And uh, you'll be able to tell if the color is moving enough. If it's not moving enough, just bring in a little more water. And I'm holding it at this angle so the More water. And then coaxing it around. I want it to, to dry like that. I wonder if it will. And in fact, that's a good time to take a break. It'll probably dry this way. I mean, this, this shape is, is more graded from a light to a darker than the other one, so that that might sort of stick out oddly. Remember that one where I was thinking it was going to be darker? Yeah, look at that one now. That's... I may um, try to come up with a different solution for that. Okay, that's enough for now. <laughs>